I'm Charlie Clauser, and we're here at my house in the hills above Santa Monica, California, where I record the drums and all the other instruments for most of my film scores. I'm most known for my scores to the Saw horror movie franchise, but in a previous life, I was the keyboard player in a band called Nine Inch Nails. Over the past 15 or so years, a lot of my time has been taken up doing the scores for the Saw series, which, although the public's impression of them is that they're extremely violent and there's it's just nonstop mayhem, which it sort of is. There's also a subdued tension and a quieter element to the scores that may not be the first thing that people notice, but is a really important part of the sonic landscape. And in between doing installments in the Saw series, I've worked on a variety of different TV shows and other movies. Uh, and a project I did a few years ago was a television series called Wayward Pines, which was very different. It was much more quiet and restrained than you might find in a more violent action picture. But I still used a lot of percussion and it was played in a different manner. But the sound families and the instruments that I chose were still very similar to what I would have used in a, something like a Saw movie, but just articulated differently and played a little more lightly. When I'm beginning the writing process for a score, I often start with the drums and really try to draw some inspiration from the energy level that comes out of the speakers. Whether I'm working with individual sample drums or piecing together uh, recordings that from previous projects just to use as a mock-up, that really helps to inspire and influence the character of the other instruments that get recorded and the parts which each instrument is playing. Even in the years of making uh, rock albums, I would always start with the drums because the, the level of power and intensity that comes from the percussion bed kind of points the direction to how the other instruments can react. In my writing process, that's always where I start, maybe because I was originally a drummer before becoming distracted with all these other instruments. But I think a lot of other composers write in a similar fashion. They want to get some kind of rhythmic bed that can help to inform their energy level before they're deciding on which chords and which transitions and how dense to make the instrumental track that's going to surround that percussion track. I'm a big collector of sample libraries, percussion libraries especially, and I've found that there's sort of a gap in the middle between rock drum type libraries and cinematic percussion libraries. A lot of times the rock drum libraries, while they're many are excellently recorded and are perfect for producing conventional modern rock songs, when you want to do things like have ensembles of tom-toms and so forth, the mic techniques that are often used in those libraries isn't exactly what I'm looking for. Likewise, on the other end of the scale, a lot of the modern cinematic percussion libraries focus more on world percussion instruments and sort of big, boomy things in big, reverberant spaces. Somewhere in the middle there is a territory that I wind up recording my own drums for on all my projects, which is a, a mixture of rock drum instruments, but played, tuned, and recorded in a manner that's more suited to the cinematic world. So what this project is an effort to, to do is to capture the sound character and quality that I use on my own productions, which is kind of under underrepresented in the, the marketplace of sample libraries. When I'm starting on a new scoring project, I generally, um, I might mock up uh, percussion parts using samples, but I always wind up recording myself performing, usually at my house. That's what I've done for the past 15 or 17 years or so. First in a house I used to be in up in Hollywood, which was similar to this. It was a lot of concrete and glass and asymmetrical shapes. And I found that it provided a, a, a certain character to the reverb that was short and dense and thick and added a lot of character to the drum sounds, but wasn't overly long so that I could play complex or fast parts without it just turning into the, a cloud of reverberant mud. And uh, when we found this house about 12 years ago, of course, like many musicians or recording engineers, the first thing I did was walk in the room and <laughs> clap my hands to see what the reverb character was like. And uh, I found it very similar to the house that I'd had such success 
doing similar recording projects in before. So uh, we jumped on it and uh, I've recorded a lot of drums just right here in this main area in the living space. And those kind of instruments react well in a very hard and brash room like this. And it really gives you an aggressive sound. Kind of the centerpiece of a lot of the drum recordings that I make comes from uh, the Ludwig John Bonham kit, which comes in two flavors on this sample collection. The orange Vistalite plexiglass kit, as made famous in so many Led Zeppelin concert recordings, and also a, a variation on that, which is the stainless steel kit. The shells are the same size as the orange Vistalites, but because of the different materials, it is a very different sounds, a little bit more harder and more resonant. A family of sound that I like to refer to is soft sounds played loud. So that's something that we're doing a bit of in this library where we have softer articulations, uh, instruments played with brushes or alternative beaters, and then boosting some of those sounds up so that they're more apparent to the ear. And that's a whole family of sound that I like to use even in, in a more aggressive project, but was really important in something like uh, Wayward Pines, where it was much more restrained and tense audio environment that we were trying to come up with. The instruments that we've sampled for this project are drawn from mostly from my collection of instruments, some of which I've owned for decades, uh, and a couple of which we've brought in just for this. One of my favorites that we were able to include in this project was uh, my set of rototoms. It's rare that rototoms are included in a percussion library most of the time because they kind of sound like a cartoon character. They sound like Barney Rubble's feet driving the car in the Flintstones. And the, the way in which I like to tune them and the heads that I like to use on them and the way in which we play them when they're being recorded is kind of atypical of the sounds that I usually hear when I'm hearing a sampled rototom. I want an aggressive, short, and almost a slack sound. It's really just a nasty slap with no tone and no ring. It's not a boom, boom, boom. It's much more of just a nasty thwack. And it's a great complement to the more round tonal qualities of the John Bonham drums and the bass drum ensemble and the surdus. So the rototoms were a great chapter in this adventure. Part of my motivation for doing this was to finally capture the definitive set of samples of my instruments, but doing so is a lot of work. And so teaming up with Spitfire has allowed me to record more articulations and more beater types and more velocity ranges and just more samples than I ever have in the past. So working with Harry Wilson from Spitfire and the excellent Martin Cook, who's engineering these recordings, as well as the two percussionists, Lucas Faring and Hal Rosenfeld, who are doing a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes time to recording single hits, was really made it possible for this project to move forward. In the course of recording this project, we feel like we've come up with a really unique set of samples of these instruments in this space that combine to create a really hard sound that I'm hoping will be really useful to composers who are working on action films or anything that just needs to have an aggressive action feel. And I can't wait to hear what people come up with. One, two, three.